What's up, what's up? Today I got a quirky flex board comp ready for you guys. Anyhow, let's get this video rolling. So I didn't go for my ordinary Sane vest. I actually contested a bow here. And for once, I actually managed to win the carousel. I swear. TFT, it has some hard mechanics. But I swear, the hardest thing in the game, it's getting that carousel. Like... No matter how much I'm spamming my mouse, I feel like my mouse gonna explode or something. Still, someone just takes the item. And I'm left there with the tier or some other items you don't want. And it can't just be me. Like, what's the secret? How do you even win the carousel? I don't understand it. Anyhow, I got two Heimers. Always nice to see. In case... I can get the early trainer going, stacking him, feeding those snacks. Will be great. And there we have it. Cannoneer Heart. Amazing. Gives me a trace down as well. So, Nomsi, welcome to the crib. Crib. What up? Anyhow, so I went for two bruisers here, get some frontline. But then I thought, hey, we're so heavily invested in this Cannoneer, so let's see if that works. I also needed someone to put the Ginsus on. And I'm against the Astral guy, so it's gonna be pretty easy. The question is, can we keep this win streak going? We leveled up the four, which means we have to try to win streak here. The problem is the front line is looking non-existent to be honest. So hmm. Yeah, it's kind of awkward since I didn't want to play two front lines since I needed my Jinx to play Ginsus since I'm gonna switch her to Corky later so I, and I'm gonna keep my Tristana so I didn't want to put the Ginsus on her so I just did a risky play here and level up to 5 so if I lose my win streak here we're in deep trouble we need to get the economy from those wins and uh, yeah if we lose then we're gonna rely on our economy which is zero we don't even have one interest so we're in some shallow waters here so it should be interesting to see how this pans out so far I have gone against some pretty weak people though, so that's good, but you never know, maybe I'm against a cool pack guy with level 7, who knows, to be honest. Only due time will tell. And this game, it had a really <laughs> weird twist in the end, I'm not gonna spoil it for you guys, but Ooh. that was kinda crazy. I'll show you later. Don't worry. So here he just went for the BF. Could be a Giant Slayer for Corky. But that's always a nice one. Or it could be a Spear Sojin. That we can put on um, a Sona in the future. Or... Uh, mm. Yeah, maybe a Six. Edge of Night. In case there's a lot of Assassins or Siphons. We'll just have to see. For now though, Ginx is gonna hold that item. A 10 AD bonus? It might not be that much, but you never know. Maybe it is the deciding factor. Hmm, so... Yeah, a 2 star Skarner should be better than a 1 star Lowy. We just need to get the HP on the front line. Get a bit tankier. Oh, this guy is kind of playing the same stuff as I am. Yeah, but we look stronger than him though. This should be fine. Oh wait, did I speak too soon? Okay, nah. We good. Never doubted it a second. Yeah, we fine. It would be good to get the Heimer 2 store, so we increase the snack factory, but for now we're fine. 
this comp doesn't totally rely on uh, Nomsi, but it is a nice uh, bonus. So that's why I put in uh, Imer there instead of Scorner. It's a free extra snack. I'm gonna win this round anyhow, so yeah. There's no loss to it, just a little benefit. So that's a quick tip you can do. Let's see what the orb offers. Hmm. Here. Uh, I guess it's a spare sojin. Works kind of nice with the Ginsos sense. Ginsos makes you attack faster. And uh, Spear Sojin focuses on those auto attacks, so they work together. More autos equals more Spear Sojin procs. So this uh, firecracker is gonna get cracked. Yeah. That's a scary bully bear though. But maybe this Spear Sojin can slow him down. That's free ult so far. Okay, I think the Spear Sojin saved us here actually. Nice. Yeah, what's that? Five ults? Not too shabby. So uh, that's the reason why I went for Ludus Echo here. Since uh, this Jinx is casting so much. Plus we have a Nomsi, so that's an extra unit. So I have a lot of units that uh, casts. And uh, Jinx just casts a lot, so the Ludus is gonna proc. Many times. That together with Revel should do some nice splash damage. Don't mind if I do. Ooh. That's a scary swain though. But for now, I think it's fine. But once he gets that rage blade, it's gonna be it's gonna be strong. Hmm. So we actually managed to get a win streak here. It's a pretty weak lobby, so... But people are gonna scale, since uh, the Shimmer scale item is Draven's Axis. So they're just gonna get those three components and that three gold, so... We need to stay ahead on the curve here. Push our winnings, increase the money. And try to keep up. Well, we got some nice combat augments, which is where my strength comes from. Cannoneer and Ludens. Pretty nice, even though it's only silver augments. Hmm. What do we want here? Yeah, that got taken, unfortunately. A belt is always fine. We need those tank items for Ida's later. Better start preparing already. Try to think uh, in the future. So there's a mistake I did. That I built the Sunfury Cape. Which I realized I already have Nomsi. Which applies anti-heal. So I wa it wasn't necessary. But yeah, it's not the end of the world. So here we're actually gonna lose. Damn you, birthday cake. Man. Ooh, quirky. And the sauna. Okay, that's a shop if I ever seen one. Thank you, Mortog. He's blessing me today. And the Braum. That's good. Preparing for the Idas. That's a Shio Yu though. But the Shio Yu went to the front line, which is good. Maybe we can kill him and survive. Nah, this zone, this uh, Leona is just too tanky. Holy! Imagine when those items get. Wait, it's actually close. Come on, Corky. Yeah, we. G Never mind. Oh, the Caesar rod did me dirty there. Let's have some fun. Ah yeah, yeah. Imagine when that Leona becomes a. Uh, or when uh, when she sells Leona and buys Nico, it's gonna be a super tank. Kinda scary. A golden orb. All right. 
Hey, a free corky just like that. And a Sona in the shop. And a double Ekarim. Okay, that's good. This game is blessed. Alright, Corky 2. That's a big power spike. And a 1% Soraka. Holy. This game is going crazy. <clears throat> yeah. And the Gorgol is nice as well. For now my front line is pretty awkward so I'm gonna lose until I find something worthy of tanking. But it's fine since we have so much HP. And then we got another combat augment for cannoneers. Hotshot. Alright. Nice. I have so much HP like I was saying earlier so... We can play it slow here and save money, build up the Econ. Plus we found that early 1% Soraka, which is gonna heal me 2 HP each round as well. So things are looking good. Now we just need to find an Ides or a Siphon. Oof, that Deja has a clear line though, it's gonna hit all my team. That's scary. Hopefully he doesn't get a crit though from your gauntlet. That could do some devastating damage. Okay, he didn't crit at least. So maybe we have a chance here. Come on Corky, do the thing. Ah, not quite. Yeah, okay, Siphon. Nice. And a Orn actually. So that's good, get some more CC from both Siphon and the uh, Orn. So this is gonna give our backline a little bit more time. We're still squished though, since they are 1 stars, but yeah, it's better than 1 cost 2 stars though, for sure. Kinda miss my Soraka, but it's fine. Copium, just need to cope. Edge of Night on show you is kind of scary ah, it's fine we're going for a lose streak we're getting some extra money all is good no need to panic when we're level 8 and find our units we're gonna be fine and there i have the hodge another great item on corky don't mind if I do. It's gonna be super strong. If we can just find a... Um, maybe a giant slayer on him. Would be perfect. And that zone has a perfect line. Straight for the team. Onto the carry. Stunning Swain. But I kinda griefed my quirky positioning here. So we're gonna lose. But to be honest... I kinda prefer losing here, so I get that extra money from the lose streak. Oh, we need to turn uh, things around here. And now we have three trainers, so the Nomsi should do some decent damage. As well as Lulu giving more attack speed to the Porky, increasing his damage and saving him for potential stuff. If someone jumps at him, she can polymorph him. So that's why I always place Lulu with your carry and uh, your support units like Sona in the left corner. So uh, Lulu only buffs your own teammates for the carries rather. Because she can only buff three targets. I yeah, I think it's three targets. So you make sure that she doesn't buff like a Heimer or something. A one unit loss. Yeah, this is, to be honest, even a win. So here I just went for the Giant Slayer as well as a Ciceroth. Honestly, perfect. So it was not optimal with the Sunfire since 
I already have a hotshot and uh, nomsi, but I thought the other items were so perfect and I don't wanna waste my gold rolling in the shop. Or in the shop I wasted here, <laughs> obviously, but in the treasure dragon. So I just settled for the other. So here I'm gonna switch out my siphon for the Idas. It's a bit late, but it is what it is. Unfortunately, it was the the item where you die, where you need to die seven times. I don't know the name of it. Maybe the Termini Vest or something like that. So it's not perfect since I want to get strong now and if you're gonna play that item you want to scale it early but I think we're gonna get time to scale it if I remember to use it even. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. I forget to use it. I can't blame anything but myself on that one. Yeah here yeah, I realized. Oops. Well well. Fine, we don't need it. We gotta flex, you know, show some muscle. Oh, it was the Termin Investor. I'm surprised I remember that to be honest, but... Let's make sure to remember to use it this time. And now I'm ready. So that's a little trick you can do on Shimmer Scale. You can just remove Ides or whatever Shimmer Scale unit you have. And then the item pops off, so you can uh, put it on whatever unit you want, which is really nice with permanent investors since you want to put it on a unit that you know for sure is gonna die. And um, so you can just pop it off, and when you see your unit's gonna die, you put it on that unit. So here I can just place it on whoever I think is gonna die. So that's nice. What do you guys think of uh, Shimmer Scale by the way? To be honest I miss uh, Mercenary. That was so fun. This is like the lame version. Made in China version of... Uh, Mercenary. Let's see what we can get here. We're second pick, so probably not what we want. But I got a frontline item. I don't complain for that. Offers me a bit more tankiness. Thank you. We're gonna pop that onto Iris. I kind of regret having Caesar rot on him. I could have put that on Braum maybe, but it's fine. At least Caesar will taunt them, so he gets more value of the gargoyles since everyone's attacking him. Better than nothing, I suppose. Okay, the Shiryu is moving onto my backline. At least my court is safe for now. Hopefully, we can deal more damage to him. Yeah, court is safe. Hopefully Yasuo doesn't do Yasuo things. Now we're good. Dead. Ooh. Nah, we're fine. It was a close match, but we overcame it in the end. So here we, we're pretty healthy. We have good economy. I'd rather you spread it and try to go level 9. I think we're strong enough to win most matchups anyway, so we're gonna stay 8. The risk is that we lose, but the reward is that we come first place. Risk it for the biscuit, I would say. Man, there's a lot of shimmer skill. He got two emblems, wow. Yeah, this guy wins for sure. He could get a 3 star legendary to be honest. Yeah, he's so rich. He's level 9. Yeah. Level 9 with 5 economy. I wonder how much gold he even has. Wouldn't surprise me if he had like 100 gold. 
Jimmer scale goes crazy sometimes. Another gargoyle, for sure. Increasing that front line. So now let's just go 9. Whatever. Also, Rocket is back. I always get baited by Pike. You think like, okay, a 2 star legendary? That's amazing. But I feel like Pike always underperforms. Like, if you compare him to um, standalone Yasuo, the Yasuo is gonna do like 5 times more. But well, maybe that is why I get Pike, since no one is buying him. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay, that's a Gambler's Blade Willy Bear. And a scary. But he has no Ginsu, so... I don't think he's gonna get through my tanks. He has Giant Slayer though, but... At least his attack speed isn't ramping up with the Ginsus. I feel like that item is like... The item of this set. Like every set, there's like some items that are universally broken. And I feel like this set the Ginsus is so good on most stuff. Alright, two Sona in one shop. And two Hecarims. I honestly prefer Hecarim over Pike. I feel like he's gonna do more tanking. And that's really all I want to get to give my units enough time to kill them. The pike is jumping around randomly. Yeah, look at that Hectorim. It does more than pike, I would say. Even though it's a poor cost. Like, that's uh, something I started doing a lot more is... Um, even though it doesn't give any traits, since you have other traits... Uh, I still buy like um, Orn 2, Hecarim 2 or uh, Nico 2 if I have the chance, just since they offer so much tankiness. Which it uh, feels kind of bad to uh, not have uh, traits or perfect traits, but sometimes you just have to throw in a unit for the value of that unit. Sure, a trait could give you a lot of stuff, but if it's just buffing bad units, it's not gonna help with much. It just, <clears throat> it just looks good on your trait list. Like, uh, that's why Exodia comps and like 8 of anything is usually worse. Since if you have a lot of different traits, like I have here, you're usually gonna have high value units. If you play, for instance, 8 Mirage, you're gonna have a lot of 1 cost or 2 cost, which you don't want that much. Meanwhile, if you play like a flex board, where you have a lot of different traits, you're gonna be able to play in random high cost and high value units, such as Sona or Yasuo instead of. Aliona and Yon. Yeah, uh, this Yasuo got a perfect angle. Just mowing through my Corky here. Yeah. That was rough. But it's all good. You can come back here. Okay. There we have it. Four star Corky. Just what I needed. Yeah, I think that's more than enough to win this lobby, to be honest. I'm already pretty strong, but this is just like a huge turning point. Let's see if it can deliver. So I placed my Braum back here, since I knew that he had a Pike and a Kane. So I just wanted to protect my Corky a bit. In case they attacked him, Braum is there to shut them down. 
Yeah, you see that quirky damage. Man, those numbers is crazy. Holy. Almost 20k. There we go. Hmm. Hurricane. I don't really know who can use that. Ah, who cares? We're gonna win anyhow. I'll just throw it on Tristana, I guess. So I could get a 2-star two Nico here, but I think uh, Hecarim is more valuable since I can stun his backline more. I hit this uh, Swain. But you can argue that the Nico is better since he has uh, Yasuo and uh, Woolly Bear. That she can just stun them, but I don't know. I think both are fine. Wait. <laughs> yeah, he just got 100 HP again. Alright, dude. Sure. Just a casual free star Soraka. My free game. No. My LP. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like, it motivates me and it helps me out on YouTube. I make TFT content just like this video, so if that interests you, be sure to subscribe. Have a great one everybody. Ciao.